place to be. God's directors today. They are those who are suffering in bereavement today. So many, dear Father, we looked on yesterday. There are so many who will put their life on to rest. Yeah. But give them the strength to understand that if they die in Christ, yeah. that they're with you this day. Give them some comfort and give them some peace. Yeah. Now, those fathers who are so confused about this virus thing. Oh, yeah. And Lord, we know this all in your hand. Yeah. We realize, oh God, that whatever you agree, yeah. All of this will fade away. Uh -huh. But we must trust you. We must believe on you. We must call on the name of the Lord. Yeah. And live this life that you designed for us to live. Yeah. So that we might be able to encourage the Lord of Jesus. Touch it today, Lord. If there's anybody here that don't know Jesus, touch it right now in the name of Jesus. And I come from my work was I do this. God, we thank you, Lord. You blessed us so you open our eyes this morning. Thank you for that. Kept us through the night, oh God. Take the food on our table this morning. Thank you, Lord. And let us not take for granted all your goodness and your grace and your grace. But always lift up the name of Jesus. To give you the praise because you're worthy of all of our praise. Teach us, guide us, direct us, Lord. Pray for our children, our families, where they are. Bring families together in love and peace oh, and love. Oh, God, bring races together. Yeah. Let them know, God, that we've all been born. Oh, we have been born again. Oh, we're all the children of God. Oh, yeah. That makes us family. Yeah. Whether you're black, white, oh, whatever yeah. race or color might be. If you've been born again, yeah. we're all family in the Christ. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Help us today to understand that. To live then, that this world might be a better world. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All this we pray in the holy precious name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While I'm on this Christian journey, you got
Just just based on something. We don't have to go that far. We don't have to go back to 20 or 19. Let's just go back yesterday. Let's go back to the day that God made us. Let's go back to the day that God made us. Let's go back to the day that God made us. Let's go back to the day that God made us. Let's go back to the day that God made us. Let's go back to the day that God made us. You know, you're not lying. 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 You're not lying
and any of the house of the Lord and the Lord and the Lord and the Lord Thank you, Nelson. As we come now on the program that says all to prayer. Somebody said, Well, I haven't been able to go to the altar since the pandemic. Right. I mean, I've been able to come to this altar. But you should have an altar in your heart. All right, all right. Every time you go to God, you ought to go to God via and by way of your altar. Yeah, yeah. As we come, we say this every weekend, it has become somewhat of redundance. But there are so many people. Uh, in need of prayer. All through the week, I'm getting calls, I'm getting letters. Even this morning, I got a note that people are in need of prayer. People call me and say, Well, remind, Pastor, we remind that Wednesday at 12 that such and such is asking for prayer. That they need prayer because there are some people who believe. That prayer really makes a difference. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm here to, to, to serve notice on you today that if it had not been for prayer, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, or I wouldn't know what I would do. Because yeah. Prayer is my escape. Prayer yeah, yeah. is my answer. Prayer is the ability that I have that would take get tough in my life. So am I talking to anybody? That's it. There's some tough things that happen. That's it, Pastor. That's it. You need to go reach me. Hello, somebody. And the only safe place to go is to God in prayer. Yes, sir. So as we come today, uh, we, we come with much prayer for much people. And I know that's not even good English, but I will say it today. We come with much prayer for much people. All right. Amen. Because we believe that God is a reward. Yeah. Is there anybody here that believes that God is a reward? Yes, sir. What kind of reward is he? He is a reward of him. Believers who call on his name uh, and who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. Right. Now, I, I listen, because I want to know what's going on. I was listening as Brother Deborah was praying, and, 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 and he said something in his prayer. He said there's a lot of people struggling and there's a lot of people that's trying to deal with this pandemic and it seems as if this pandemic is not going to go away and I'm going to tell you it's not going away. It's not going away. I don't care how much medicine we get. The pandemic is not going away. But what God is doing for us, for those of us who are listening and those of us who have common sense and use common sense, God has figured, not yet figured, God has figured out a way for us to coexist and to sustain us in the middle of the pandemic. See, I tell you all the time, you may not move every mountain, but guess what? He will give you the ability to navigate the mountain for our chance. See, everything, the enemy is asking God to rid you of all your problems. There's no need to ask God to move every mountain because he's not going to do that because if he moves every mountain, you would have no reason to call on him. If he made every situation straight, if he made every pathway unquicken, you would have no need to call on him. So every now and then, he makes us have to climb the mountain because in life, we need to be able to pray. We need to have a reason to pray. Oh, I don't ask God to move every mountain. I just said, uh, give me strength. Is there anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and, and I, is there anybody, let me just do a fact check here. Let me go to the roll call. Is there anybody here knowing him as a heart fixer? Is there anybody here knowing him as a mind regulator? How many of y'all know that he's water in dry places? And you can pray when you grow up. Tell us how. Tell you how to do these medicine when you sit there. And he's cool in a starry land. Know that he's a light in the midst of darkness. I know he's a friend with everybody else. I got to love him. That he's a friend of what's possible. So as we come today. Come asking prayer for all of those who are on our list today. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 
I try not to call these names because you get called a name, you forget it, you know, you forget the name. Somebody might get offended. Let me assure you this. Whenever the preacher is called a name, that's okay, that's wonderful. And let me tell you that man, he don't never call him. That's why you need to know how to pray. So we're going to ask prayer for all of to join us. Got a note here that Sister Deborah is asking for prayer and preparing for her. And we're going to pray for our brother, Brother Chris. Brother Chris is slowly coming along. We are praying God will have his way. You know, sometimes we have to ask the Lord to have his way. We ask prayers for all of those bereaved families today that have lost love. You know, we thought that if we got COVID shot, everything was going to be all right. See, the shot just covers COVID. It don't cover heart attacks and strokes. COVID don't stop you from dying because it is a poison to be all lost in the income institution. But if you're here today, and I'm not going to ask you for an audible response, but it's going to ask you for a visible response. If you are here and you need prayer or you know someone that needs prayer, I don't, need, I don't want you to audibly respond to this. I just want you to wave your hand. I'll just raise your hand with me so we can see. Yeah. That, 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 that this stands for not only for you, but there's probably family members, cousins, uncles, and kindred that need prayer today. So as we will bow our heads, I want you to know that God is much aware of everybody that is in need of prayer. Father God, it's Lawrence again. It's me, Lord. I'm calling upon your holy name. I come because you have invited me to come. I come because you have told me through your word that I have the privilege and the opportunity to call on your name. And God, as I come today, I take not for granted this privilege of dialogue, this privilege of communion that I have, that I can uh, engage with you. And so, first and foremost, in this dialogue, I want to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, Father, that, that you want us not only me, but it is evident that you want all of us that are here today. And so we come collectively to say thank you, God, for extending to us the life privilege, the privilege of life, health, and strength. Thank you that, that it was not predicated on, on our resume. It was not predicated on how good we looked on paper. It was not predicated with all of our past accomplishments and all of the things that we were able to do. But it was by your grace. And so you that we are here so when they collect the shot, we come to say collectively, thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, Father, for looking beyond our thoughts and seeing our need. Thank you that you did allow the bed, that king side bed, that queen side bed, that sofa, that twin bed that we slept in last night. Not to become our cooling boy. We don't have to destroy them before. Before we even have a thought about giving, giving up this world, you and I are already predestined us to get up. So we shall not be part of the future. Because it's right here. Thank you, Lord, for having us come up with this. The king of God, the privilege of life. Yes, it might be hectic. Yes, it might be going through something. Yes, we might be sharing some of that now. But in spite of all of that, we still say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the first thing we're going to thank you. Then not only that, but you woke us up, you got us up, you dressed us up, you brought us up, and here we are. And in the meantime, in the interim, you put all of that, you fed us, you clothed us, you, you provided transportation, and so for all of these remedies that you added to our blessing, we stopped out and said, Thank you, because all of this was all. All of these things that you've given up, we consider them a part. And we thank you, Lord, for just being the kind of God that 
let you fall. Now, Lord, as we come before you, I saw many hands today. I saw many outstretched hands today, signifying and solidifying the fact that they believe that you are God and can heal and shall answer their prayer. Somebody relieve that hand of God. They know you to be the God of your prayer. They believe what you said in your prayer. They, they believe that if they should ask, they've already read what you said that if we should ask, we shall be given. We somebody to believe the fact that, that, that we would seek. There's much that we can find. Somebody stand on the hot door. Not in the car, but believe that if they knock, you will be an answer. So right now, in the name of Jesus, and that's all of those who have been hospitalized. They're all hospitalized. Some of them have been hospitalized, but they don't hold them. They, they got up with their hearts today. They got up with their, they, their new morning. Some of them don't hold them. 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 For all the physical infirmities. But we thank God that they're all over them now. We thank God that there are many who live right now in the name of Jesus. I pray now that while they are wicked, while they are making much progress, that they will recall the fact that it was you that brought them out. It was you that touched that people body. It was you that gave them something that they never lived. It was you, not the doctor, not the medicine, not the prescription, not any of those things. You are the catalyst for all that who was with. Bless our congregation, Lord. Bless every congregation. In the name of Jesus. Let's not hold it too long. Don't let somebody right now feel that spirit. I feel it living in that spirit. That's somebody that needs you right now. Somebody needs you to whisper in their ear to tell them they're saying, oh, yeah. somebody, somebody's spirit is broken. Somebody's, somebody's joy is about to be. Somebody's disposition is not what it ought to be. But in the name of Jesus, touch right now. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus, speak softly. Speak softly in that ear. Give them the reassurance that they get to know that all things work together for the good of their bless, bless the leadership of this church. Bless the fellowship of this church. Do it right now, Lord. Say it right now. Right now, Lord. I'm begging you, say it right now. Right now. Don't I'm saying it right now. That's been coming over the end, and I'm not going to say it. Say it right now. 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 Say it right
Five minutes somewhere early in the morning. I guess I got too hot. People didn't, the people that were there didn't know I was in distress. But I was trying to keep anybody from knowing that I was in distress. All right. I finally had to go somewhere and sit down because I felt like I was dying. Yes, sir. So I felt bad. I felt it. I've learned a lesson. I got a lesson in children. Y'all have been preaching to me. Boy, stop. Now. Daddy, stop going out. I'm going all day without eating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the Lord, the Lord scared me. Yeah. <laughs> and when I got home and saw where that man fell out, I was feeling probably the same way I felt. I just felt like I was about to die. I really did. I, said, I told the crowd, I said, I've got to sit down. That was really a character for me in the middle of a sermon. I said, i got to sit down now. And so God had a way. That's why I'm thankful for life. We don't ever know how to go out of here. Good morning, Mr. These are the upcoming events for Sunday, 2018, 2021. The opportunities to work here during the week found in the back of your morning book. Sister Lee would like to be with the events on Saturday, July 24, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. Happy birthday goes out this week to Sister Katie Hackney on 2021. Brother Bradley Jones on 2021. Sister Del McGee on 2022. Brother Chris Washington on 2022. Now on Jesse Bell on July <laughs> 65 years old. I'd like to recognize my goddaughter Sonia Britton on July 23rd. Right. Right. I, just, I just want to come engage for a second. How's everybody doing this morning? Last Sunday, I came to church happy, like always, thank God, and everything. So I go through a little ups and downs. We all do in life. We don't know what life has in store for us day by day. But I get out of church and everything. I'm okay. I go to work the following day. My wrist started hurting me pretty bad. So that's my thing. So Tuesday, I don't go to work. I wake up and I can't move it yeah. and everything. Just let you know how good God is. How we got to continue to lean on God yeah. and that. So Wednesday morning, I wake up, boom, my head is just big now yeah. and everything. So, uh, and yeah, Sister Lee, uh, I'm a big man. I'm a strong man, but it had tears coming out of my eyes. Yeah. Just constantly thawing and thawing and thawing and thawing and not stopping. So I go to the doctor and everything, and whatever, and uh, they, they give me a little something or whatever. And I'm praying and praying and praying and everything. And then after I leave the doctor at Wednesday, the next morning, Thursday, I don't have nothing. Yeah. So I sit there and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I know a lot of you that sit around in here, my mouth comes out of you all, my name comes out of you all's mouth because I know y'all pray for it. And I appreciate that because I go through all the doubt. So. All I'm saying is, you don't never know what life we have in store for you. We can walk out of here and can really we can fall dead and everything. So we have to keep faith in God, and trust in God and everything. And like today, I feel very, very good and everything. With my hand on went down, and I told Sister Lee this morning, I said, look at that, Bob. Look how God works. God works. <laughs> Yes. Uh -huh. Stop the week. <coughs> Put down your guns and pick up a Bible. Take a shot of self and not This is the news I announced to this morning with a
Take that, that announcement out of the put it back on about the 21st of September when that new gun law comes into effect. We are Amen. grateful today and we ask that we cover ourselves according to the announcements and be mindful and considerate of all that has been said. Um, and we want to note to you that uh, we are. Uh, uh, on the, as it relates to the food ministry, we have ordered the building. Right. The building has been ordered and been for about six or seven or eight weeks and that building here do the necessary thing to make it worthy of being able to go in what's necessary. I said that so that I could segue into this that I want to remind us uh, that next Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday, am I right? Amen. The fourth Sunday is the Sunday that we collect funds mm -hmm. for the food ministry. Right. So I wanted to let you know, get you give a heads up that next week is Food Week Ministry. Mm -hmm. So that we will be doing that because uh, I really, uh, I tell you one of the things I'm most excited about, I'm excited about a lot of things around here. And I'm going to be honest, one of the most exciting things I'm excited about is this food ministry. And I won't say it to win no points for nobody because I'm already here. I don't need to win no points. Uh, but I'm really excited about the food ministry. And I, I, I just enjoy how to work in, in the food ministry. Right. I'll say that I have a joy of being able to uh, work with these that are working so diligently to make sure our community is faith. So right. we want to do everything we can to support the food. But it takes about two thousand dollars a month to really sufficiently sustain food ministry. Uh -huh. And so I just want us to be mindful of that and conservative of that. I want us to continue to pray for one another. Yeah. Let's continue to strive. We are making great progress. I, I talked to my friends uh, that are preachers and uh, I would like y'all to know and we, we're doing some great things over here because there's a lot of churches that are still not in their buildings. There are a lot of churches that are not doing even the Sunday school, the midweek service, or the morning service. And yet the Lord has made it possible yeah, right. for us to be able to do yeah. this. Yeah. And so we're grateful. Uh, one guy said, well, how have you been able to pull it out? Well, I said, first of all, I've been able to do it by the grace of God. But then I've been able to do it because I've got people who are willing to, to, to make the sacrifice. Uh, people that are willing to follow the instructions and do the things that will keep us safe. I said that by God's grace and through that willingness to cooperate, we've been able to successfully uh, pull this off. So we give all the praise. Y'all can give it to your hands and give it all the praise. And last week, moving on, on last week, we had a wonderful time. Amen. Those of you that were listening via the Facebook, or those of you who were present in the present, we had a wonderful time. Amen. 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 And we were grateful to Pastor Jalen Williams at Rock Hill Church of the Port of Texas. I tell you, that young man brought some fire with him. And then I said that the same way into this. I'm still praying, amen. I'm still seeking God's guidance on this, but it's looking more and more like we're going to have some form of revival. We will have some form, of revival, whether it be a complete form, but we will have, if it's the Lord's will, amen, we will have some form of revival this year, amen. So y'all keep me prayed up as I keep in contact. And I want the Lord to guide me through this process. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Moving forward, again, we want you to govern yourself according to those announcements. Be mindful on Wednesday nights. Be here on Wednesday night. We would love to have you with us on Wednesday nights. Uh, Amen. Yeah. Uh, Middays and Wednesday, uh, via the Telegraph, to Facebook, we have a prayer gathering. And anybody is invited to be with us at 12. It's virtual. Amen. So wherever you are, you can tune in with us. And we would love to have you in our virtual room. Amen. Because we, we don't wait till Sunday to start praying for you. We pray for you all week long. And so we want you to be mindful of that. 
and considering that I'm, I'm happy to have our guest with us today. I'm glad to have our guest, Brother uh, brother Liggins. We, we are happy to have you and your family with us today. Uh, we we go back. I won't tell them how far we go back, but uh, I won't tell all our secrets uh, about when me and your little man used to run around. But we're happy to have you, Brother Liggins. We want you to know that we extend a all of welcome to you. And not only to you, but all of our visitors today, we want you to know that we welcome you. Hello, somebody over here at New Jerusalem Baptist Church. And so we're thankful to God that you're here, and we pray that something will occur that will be so transforming today that it will cause you to look back when you go out the door. God is so good. And so as we look forward now, it's a blessing to see all of you here. It's a blessing to have all of you here. This is a great day, and we celebrate the Lord this day. My wonderful wife is here. Amen. You know I would go without saying anything about her today. Stand up, wife, so everybody, just in case the visitors may not know who you are. This is, this is my wife. Grateful for her. Amen. Now we're going to move forward. Quiet, sound beautiful, but they're going to sound even more beautiful. And I don't know if you noticed it, but there are some additions. Amen. There are some additional members. Now, I'm asking the Lord, he's, he's sending uh, people to us, and my prayer is, Lord, send us more men. The suffering and humiliation of being outnumbered in Sunday school. I'm tired of being outgiven, given in Sunday school. So I pray, one of my friends, Lord, send me some more men. Amen. I was going to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I guess y'all not very, very, very humorous this morning. <laughs> so we thank you now. Uh, our, our, our brothers are coming. I'm going to ask them to come. We're going to bless this offering. Uh, I want to commend. Let me say another thing. I'm always saying this. I'm not trying to get involved. I appreciate the willingness of, of all of you to give. That's one thing I, I just I feel about you all. Y'all will give. I'll tell you that y'all will be and the number show that y'all will be here because y'all feel like there's a purpose yeah. in giving and, and, and the Lord has really blessed us. He really has financially, the Lord has really blessed us this year. Amen. Now that don't mean we can't stand some more blessings. But I'm gonna give God credit for what he's already done. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now. This opportunity of giving. We pray now, God, that every gift that will be given, that it will be a blessing to this ministry. Bless this ministry that it may go forth and impact not only the lives that are here, but other lives that. And so we thank you for the giving because the giving helps us continue to minister. Oh, yeah. Bless every giver. Bless every gift that has been given. And then that's the people that just may not have it or have a desire to get more, but they just don't have the substance to match that desire. We pray that you'll bless them. And if by chance, I don't believe it, if by chance there are those who just will not give, have them to realize that giving is a part of worship. Oh, yeah. That you love it the cheerful giver, and blessed are those who care for they shall receive. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Then I write in this New King James Version, 13th chapter of Judges. So the Israelite uh, here did what was evil, amen, in the Lord's sight. And so the Lord handed them over to the Philistines for 40 years. So there was a certain man from Zerubbabel, or from the family of Daniels, the name was Manoah. Why was I not able to conceive and have no children? But the Bible says in verse 3 that the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, It is true, you are unable to conceive and have no children. But you will conceive and give birth to a son. Now please be careful not to drink wine or beer. Get it unclean. For indeed he will conceive and give birth to a son. And you must never cut his hair. Because the boy will be a Nazarite to God from birth. And he will begin to save Israel from the power of of the Philistines. Uh, right. Chapter 16 said, And Samson went down to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute, and went to bed with her. Gaze I heard that Samson was dead and surrounded the place, and waited in ambush for him all that night at the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, Wait until dawn, and we will. Kill him. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. For a little while today, I'm going to talk about the high cost of low living. All right. All right. Now, well, all right. Let me give you a moment to digest that. The high cost. All right. Somebody all say amen. amen. Of low living. Right, right. right. Sound like I don't give very many amen today. Like I'm a man of the Lord, but I have to preach this by myself. The high cost yes, sir. of living life at the low level. All right. Which goes contrary to everything that Jesus came to do because he said in his word, I come that you might have life, somebody don't say amen, amen. and that you have, have it more abundantly. Yeah. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but as I grow older, hello somebody, is there anybody growing older with me? Man. Everybody in here is older today than they were yesterday, but they are today older. Uh, I'm more uh, mindful, hello somebody, now that I am retired, hello somebody, right. and that my money is not, hello somebody, the same money I was making when I was working, I'm not making the same amount of money that I make when I work. Yeah. Is anybody in that predicament? Uh, Man. Somebody said, hey, somebody, I somebody said, I'm going to fix it, I am too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to fix it come here. It refers to the mark. It's fixed. Yeah. That they deposit some money into my account. So it's a fixed income. And because it is a fixed income, I'm conscious always about how much I spend. All right. I don't want to be caught with more going out yeah. than what's coming in. Right. Right. I'm trying to lay the foundation. If y'all go with me. I'm going to make sense of all what I'm saying. And because I'm trying to be responsible, I'm trying to be a, a good steward, I'm trying to make oh, yeah. sure that I don't bankrupt myself by trying to live a lifestyle that I cannot sustain. I don't know. See, that's a lot of our problem. That's why a lot of us can't sleep at night. Say that. Say that. Really that. Oh, I mean. Yeah. 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 Come to talk about it. I just threw that out there. See, so many of us are robbing Paul to pay Peter. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so many of us are trying to keep up with the Jones and until we can't maintain what we got. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is that I'm conscious of cost. All right. I'm, 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 I'm aware of what things cost because, because, because the more I spend, the less I want to spend. And so I'm, I'm mindful. I, I was looking at a car just the other day uh, because I want to buy a car. And, 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 and I, I first thing I want to know, I asked the man, what's the cost? 
Yeah. I, 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 I know what this sticker is saying about. Ain't no way to put a lot of paper in that sticker said because yeah. I have sense enough to know that you already put a whole lot of stuff in that sticker yeah, yeah. that I don't want to pay for. So I want to know what it, when I all this Mickey Mouse and around, just tell me what you can sell. He was talking outside in my life. I said, I'm going to ask you, I ask you, what did it cost? Because I, until I figure out what it cost you, I got to figure out what I can afford. I'm going to say, that looks like soup for me, y'all. See, some of y'all can go in there and buy that car and never look at the shit and just pay what it is. But the car, so I'm counting up the cost because in the long run, it's the car that's going to have an effect on me in the long run. Yeah. We need to understand that God has called us to be ambassadors. Right. God has called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. God, God, God has said to us, come out from the world, dear man, and demonstrate your ability to be a Christian. And, and, and that's what's wrong with the world today. The world is looking to the church to try to find out if we're living in time. And what the what the fact what the, the, the world has found out that a whole lot of us that's in the church is worse off than something that don't come to church. See a lot of folks say, well, they don't need to go to the church. They drink more than I do. They they get higher than I do. They they, they kill somebody. They cook more than I do. They they do this and that. And so since they're on the same fire, I might well not play with God. I might well just stay out here and continue to do what I'm doing because at least I'm not trying to fool nobody because God already knows where I am. He knows where I was at. Can I, can I tell the truth and show you the devil? That, that was some of my friends that had calls and things, and I was jealous because I felt like, you know, they had more than I had. But see, see if life is not consistent of the abundance of things because you can have a whole lot of things and still go to hell. You, you, you can have a whole lot of things and still go to jail. You, you can have a lot of material that and still be a high school dropout. You, you, you can have a whole lot of fame and never get a job. And so, so this particular guy in this text, he was born with privilege. And sometimes when we are born with privilege, it messes a lot of us up. Because that, that's why some of our children are so messed up. Because we've given them everything. We, we have not made our work for anything. Every time they need something, we are always there to get it because we have developed this mentality that if we give them everything then somehow that's going to qualify them to be great when they in actuality sometimes we stand in that group by giving them everything because we don't let them understand the of the purpose of working the car they got everything that they always needed and when they can't get what they can't get then they take it from somebody else and then when they take it from somebody else they get locked up yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so some of the, some it seems to succeed. You know, just because you got everything, don't mean that you're going to succeed. Yeah. Right. The Bible says here that Israel, hello, somebody, has has again uh, sin in the heart and the minds of God. Right. Are y'all praying with me? Israel, Israel had a pattern. Hello, somebody. It's just like uh, black black folk. We have pattern. The more God blesses us, the harder head we become. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the more God blesses us, the more He delivers us, the more He brings us up, the more we try Him. Hello, sir. And so Israel, the Bible said that they had sinned in the sight of God. Can I tell y'all something? You can't hide nothing from God. You can't do nothing that God did not work. You can't go away where God can't find you. You can't entertain the call that God is listening to. To wherever you go, however you approach it, God is aware of everything that you do. All right. Samson was an example of a child that had 
Everything the Bible says here that because the Philistines, hello somebody, see God works in mysterious ways. How many of y'all know God? See, God can take your enemies. Hello, sir. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. God can take your enemy and whip you with your enemy and then turn around and whip your enemy for whipping you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be careful with God because, see, He knows what He is most powerful. And because of that, He has allowed the Philistine to be Lord over Israel. In other words, they were bullying. Hello, somebody. They were bullying Israel. But you see, when you pray, if you keep praying, uh, the Bible says, if you pray and faint not, you shall reap in due season. So, what I'm trying to tell you, they began to pray. And now, the man down there in, 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 in this particular time, by the name of Medora, and his wife had been praying. She had been married for a long time, but she had been praying, and he may not come when you want it. He may not come when you first pray. He may not come when you pray secondly. He may not come even after you pray three times. But once I get you pray and you pray in sincerity, God will take it upon himself to answer your prayer. Right? Yeah. 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 That can give me a high five. Yeah. And you know, to set the repassion, I know he will show up. He may not come. I'm calling him in. I'm going to be showing up. I'm going to be showing up. I'm going to be showing up. Whenever he acts, whenever he shows up, whenever he comes about, he always on time. Even when he's late, he's on time. Even when you're running on time, he's on time. Even when you're on time, he's on time. Yeah. It says that, that seven times this, this nation had uh, had violated God's principle. Uh, they had rebelled in apostasy. In other words, they were whoring out the, the wrong God. Hello, somebody. You, you know that God is a jealous God. Oh, I wish I had somebody. God is not going to compete for your affection. Yeah. Because God has done too much for you. God has brought you through it. Uh, ups and down to have to compete for your affection. Yeah. yeah. Are y'all gonna pray with me? And so the Bible said that the angel of the Lord, hello, somebody came down to visit Manoah and his wife, and, and, and the angel told them that uh, I know that you're married. You don't have to tell me. See, you don't have to tell God your circumstance. God already know your circumstance. Yeah. Yeah, he wants you to get out, but you don't have to. You don't have to give God a detailed item of your situation. You don't have to tell God this right. You, know, you just tell the Lord. He will work it out because He's always got the inside information. And so the Bible said that. I kind of rush over. The Bible said that they they, they said, yeah, you gonna have a son, and, 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 and you know, and that'd be like telling me, hello, sir, at six. All right, all right, telling me that Trent is pregnant. Well, I'm on. That scared me to death. <laughs> that scared me to death. But the Lord said, because the Lord had heard the prayer of Israel. Yeah. The Lord, somebody said, well, when did the Lord hear America's prayer? The Lord is already hearing America's prayer. It may not seem like it may not seem. See, sometimes God has to let us bump our heads. Oh, y'all yeah, go help me. Sometimes God has to let us go all the way down before we can come all the way up. Sometimes God has to suffer us misery because we are, we are unappreciative of what He's done. Sometimes God has to stop hardship. Uh, God has allowed so much in this last few years that it's just unimaginable how God but it's a purpose because the Bible said all things work together for the good of them who are called according. I wish I had somebody according to his purpose. And so the Bible said they were a son and his name was Samson. And the name Samson means sunshine. Yeah. All right. And they said, now when you have this son, and also I, there's a specific way that you need to raise him. Now, y'all don't pray with me. Can I just teach you, man? See, the Bible teaches us uh, in Proverbs 22 that we ought to train up. Hello, somebody. I'm not sure. Yes. Yes. Oh, go on and preach, right? That we ought to train them up in the way that they should. Now, let me tell you something about children. That was the time when I was a child. And let me tell you something. I know my mama was praying for me, but I did a lot of things. Hello, somebody. I did a lot of things that were ungodly. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. the angel of the song. It's like, I did a lot of things that I was ashamed of. All right. Oh, that's true, man. Yes, sir. I did a lot of things that I shouldn't have done. I, I said a lot of things that I shouldn't have said. I, 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 I gave myself in a lot of activity that were ungodly that, that I had not been trained to do. But I thank God that while I was in the midst of what I was doing, yeah. I was praying. I thank God that while I was a full time. Right. It don't, it don't have a long it doesn't have a long it. It's just somewhere in your mind when you make up your mind that you're gonna do the opposite of what your parents said. That's where fools here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thank God that while I was on the fools here. And if any of y'all know, if you Bible scholar, know that a natural right, he was consecrated unto God. In other words, he said to him, this child has to be raised a right time away. You just cannot expose him to eat it every sign. Now, while you carry him, you need to make sure that you stay away from that wife. All right. You need to make sure that you stay away from those nickel loads. Tell them somebody, you know, you're not going to help me here. And you make sure that you stay away from that corona. Hello, somebody. I've seen it all on television. I ain't trying to run out. I've seen it all. Hello, somebody. They make you so happy to talk on television. They make you want to run out and get one of the car. So I'm right back. They make you want to run out and get one of the car. And the conversation is dripping from that bottle. Hello, somebody. You know, hot day. Hello, somebody. You feel like you're going to be one of those corona. He said, I'll be all right. He said, no, stay away from those things. Matter of fact, not only that, but make sure you don't hang around the bed. Make sure he don't turn into an bar. Make sure he don't work for the fuel hall. Uh, y'all gonna pray with me? Not only that, but you just you need to stay away from the dead because this child is a special kind of child. This right. child is a child that God is going to use to bring Israel out of that situation. Let me tell y'all something. We've got to stop this kind of folk because you don't never know who God is going to use. Yeah. That sometimes your children can go astray. Yeah. Yeah. My mother told me the other day, she said, Son, I want you to come by and pray for me. I said, What's going on, Mama? She said, I just need you to, to come and pray for me. I need you to pray for your brothers. Yeah. I need to pray for you. So she said, Hello, somebody. See, sometimes when you do your best, sometimes your children can still go astray. Yeah. I don't think it's bad. I'm not going to leave you both for sitting here not saying nothing. Playing like y'all been holding all your life because you have not been. And that's why your children don't believe you because they can't believe that you live the perfect life all of your life. That's why they don't believe for what you said because they know that at some point you might not have no car, you might not have no bicycle, but you walk your way to some other You walk your way to some ungodly thing. And so Samson, even though he was raised right, the Bible said that God was using him to bring him out of chain. But even with Samson doing all of that, Samson got on the wrong track. Hello, somebody. How many of y'all know it's easy to get all the wrong track? Yeah. So I sit and tell me what you want to say. I'll never do this and I'll never do that. Baby, you better stop saying that because for every Samson, there is a denial. All right. All right. Just stop. Now, God saved me. Yeah. But I feel mad. Yeah. yeah. Hell it. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Hello. Yeah, I hope my eye wasn't a big book eye when I said it. God saved me. He put his spirit in me. He got the Holy Ghost that's God in me. But I'm still amazed. All right. All right. All right. All right. Are y'all praying with me? Yeah. And see, some of us ain't gonna never get it. And, and because I'm a man and because you're a woman, sometimes, hello, somebody, if you ain't on your God, the devil will catch you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
The devil will catch you when you ain't looking and for you hot You'll be looking at something you ain't got no business looking at. I always got that thing. Just fire you people in there. Joe Shane can fire himself. Come on. Now you you like a real one, but try to listen. Let me tell you something. There's all kinds of temptation. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's all kinds of temptation. Yeah. And the devil, let me tell you something. The devil, the devil will put something in front of you. Oh, yeah. Show me how he said it. Oh, yeah. 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 Come on, now. The devil already got a bullseye on you. Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember what the devil what, what Jesus said to Peter? He said, Peter, I'm praying for you. Why not? Because the devil wants to sift you. What you mean by sift? He wants to break you down. Are y'all praying with me? Don't, don't think you're so pious that the devil can't break you down. Because the Bible said, when you want to think more about yourself than what you ought to, you're headed for a fall. So the Bible says here yeah, that Samson was a strong man. Yeah, yeah. Not only was Samson a strong man, but Samson was a good looking man. Right. I thought that would entice somebody. Samson right. had pretty beautiful hair. Hello right. somebody. Samson Samson had a body. He he wasn't like all of sports day, but he had a body that had been groomed by the law. Right. Y'all gonna pray with me? And, and how do we know that? Because Delilah, hello somebody as Samson, the secret of his strength. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want to pray with me? It, is, it wasn't obvious that he was supernatural. The God had made Samson a supernatural being. Right. Not only had God made Samson a supernatural being, but God had imputed his spirit into Samson. Yeah, yeah. Y'all want to pray with me? And yes, I've been saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. But I have to be careful. I have to stay on my guard because the devil is a ruined lion. Hello, somebody. Seek it who he might devour. Hello, somebody. And so Samson, the first thing we see Samson did, the Bible said that Samson forgot about the calling that was on his life. Can I tell you, young people, old people, God did not save us to sit on our behind. But God saved us to go to work into the vineyard because he said, whatever is right, I will pay. God yeah. saved us that we might become disciples of him because he said in Matthew 28, he said, go ye therefore into all the world uh, and, and teaching them to observe so Samson had a special calling. He was a special kind of kid. He was a kid that had God had imparted his spirit. And let me tell you something. When God has given you his spirit, you got to be careful where you go. You got to be careful what you say. You got to be careful who you hang out. See, sometimes I'm not worried about my children, but I'm worried about the children that's with my children because they said that you know somebody. See, sometimes it's not you didn't raise your child, but sometimes the children that have not been raised have more influence on your children. That do you do? And don't, don't tell me what your children won't do because, honey, if you were out there working like I was when I was out there, your children do the same thing I do. They don't dance and they don't lie and they don't drink. Honey, a whole lot of them kids that was out there, they were drinking out drinking me. Yeah. Yeah. Me. They, they were shaking more, they were gyrating their bodies more. So don't never say what your kid, what you ought to do is just pray for your child. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your child lifted up. Don't tell me what your child will do. I see your child will soon be act like a missionary around you. But honey, when she get out of that music start playing, she ain't nothing but a seat every man but a uh, missionary. Don't tell me what little Johnny won't do. Yeah, he's respectful. He's so no sir. He, when he get out with his dog, when he hang out with his soul, when he hang out. Oh, hello, so he says, oh, to be in that choir, boy, to be in that choir, boy, to be in that choir, boy, he pulls his pants down, hello, he used to wear them up here, and now that he have with the boy, they're down here. Uh, 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 he used to be all buttoned up, now you can see his belly. Yeah, yeah, right. She used to wear, she had all the covering on when she left home, honey, but now her shoulders out. Her back is out. She cut that dress off her back on her ankles. Now it's above her knees. All right. So the Bible said that Samson, the first thing we see 
He, he was supposed to stay away from any fruit to drink. So the Bible said the first day we look at Samson, first thing he does, he goes down to temple. Hello, somebody. Right. Right. And let me tell you, anytime you disobey God, you in a downward spiral. Yeah. Right? Are y'all praying with me? Anytime you disobey God and do the contrary, his mama and daddy, hello, somebody. Let me tell you your folks something. We been where you trying to go. Yeah, yeah. Don't try to play us. Yeah, yeah. Tell it, Pastor. Tell it. You can't play me. You can't play mama. You can't play daddy. Yeah, yeah. He's a yeah, yeah. Yes, he's a missionary now. He just don't on the side. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he's a big guy. He he a big dog. He he ran out with everything. Don't think you can pull up. We played the game because we were the players. Oh, we were the players. Yeah, yeah. Hey, play. yeah, that's it. You can't fool mom and dad. So the Bible said when they went down the chimney, he saw a Philistine here, and the mom and the dad said, "Boy, can't you find somebody that's more decent? Can't you find somebody that got the same thing you got? Can't you find somebody that have the same courage that you ascribe to?" But you know what I found out that a lot of girls don't want good boys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is right. This okay. 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 See, see, I can't understand why Sally, she got a good education. She made good grades. She's good looking. She got a body out of sight. Are y'all gonna fit with me? She got a car. She got money. And I cannot figure it out. When I do, I'm going to give you all the recipe. Why should we go down there and get a little chimney? Hello, sir. That's a high school dropout. They don't want to work on the job. Come on, sir. They don't want to die. Don't pay attention in class. Walking in school. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. And yet, little sushi. That's the, the more I try to keep her from the little chimney, the more she gravitates to here. Yeah. Why these good girls want the bad boys? Yeah. Why, why don't they want somebody that loves the dog? Why don't they want somebody that's going to come on, somebody that's going to add to them? But even if you see it, you see the bad boy, the good little boys, the, come on, somebody. Yeah. I don't want to see it. Yeah. If you're going to get out, you're a good guy, and you're doing right, find you somebody that's on the same level that you are. If it's time to talk, don't be happy. They got to be inspired to go. You find somebody that's college level material. Hello, somebody. So they said to him, I got to rush up. They said, Can't you find somebody? Now, I don't believe in matchmaking, but I think what my son has quite decent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dun, dun. Every time you do that, my blood pressure for that. Right. I went out to that car and said, Come on, this one. I said, Let me tell you something. Tell him, Pastor. I said, Now, when you come to court, my dog, you don't know who I'm not here. Yeah. All, all I'm waiting on is Gabriel's call. I said, now, when you, when you take her out, you treat her like her daddy. Yeah. We'll treat her hell of somebody. Yeah, yeah. I said, now, when you bring her home, I don't care whatever time it is, you bring her to this door. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to tell mama come, you make sure I come to the door. Yeah, yeah. I said, let me tell you something. Yeah, I'm a preacher, but I can't put that Bible down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's not right. laughs> Bible said, said it, that, that he went down to Timothy and he found this girl and he got tied up with her. And the Bible said that he, he ended up marrying her and against his mother. We, so the first thing we see, the Bible said, obey your parents. Uh -huh. I'm coming to the See, the Bible teaches us that disobedient your children don't live long. I'm preaching y'all. I'm talking about the high cost of low living. See, when you don't obey your parents, you live in a low life. Hello, somebody. Well, I'm 61 years old. My mama still fussing. 
Excuse me, sometimes that I'm about 20 years old, and I never say a word because, especially if I'm in her house, I just say, Yes, ma'am. Hello, somebody. No, ma'am. Hello, somebody. Because she's, no matter how old I get, she's still my mama. All right. Hello, somebody. No matter how much of a pastor I am, she's still my mama. You know, I may have the biggest church in America, but she's still my mama. She's the one that tells me for not a month. And y'all will never hear. And so the Bible says, a disobedient child yeah. in a day shall be shot. Let me put it for a young person on, on call here. That's why so many young people are dying at an early age because they've gotten too big for their parents to handle. But they're just right for God. Now, when you get to the point where you sash your mom, hello, somebody. When you get to the point where you sash your daddy, hello, somebody. And some of y'all young people do That's why y'all ain't saying that. You sit around here sassing your mama. Sit around here sassing your daddy. But when you get it, so around the first person you talk. Yeah. When you get it, you get it. 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 And when they said something, instead of smiling, you twist your face. It's not a sight. Say, God, fuck your mama. Your eyes are rolling. You better stop that because the Lord is going to punish you. Yeah. In your brain, you better stop that. You better stop that. With all your money, with all your food, with all your dogs and water. Damn it, damn it. And you have to talk to us. It's your parents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he told me, y'all get her, y'all, y'all fetch her for me, because this is the woman that I don't oh, hello. And sometimes you have to let these children hit their head on the red wall. Now hear what I just said. Sometimes y'all let them hit their head so they can realize that peak meat is important. Sometimes they don't peak meat is important until you cook it and eat. So the Bible said that he went down to the first day, he disobeyed his parents. And the Bible said he got down there, and, and while he was down there, in terms of the, the Bible said he was attacked by a lion. Samson was so strong that, that Samson put that lion backhanded. You see, when the Lord is on your side, no enemy, no weapon fall against you can prosper. But the Lord is on your side. The wicked device that's conspired to can hurt you. See, some folk, you don't know that some folk are laying traps for you. That everybody is smiling in your face. You better wake up, baby. Everybody is showing you they're 32. They're showing you that the call, they're in your corner. There's some people that will smile at you one minute and stab you in the back of your head. That's right. They'll some folk are saying with you. And then they'll turn around and stab you. Yeah. Well, I wish I had somebody, everybody, young people, everybody that, that, think that, you, that you think is your friend. Because let me tell you something, get out and see how many friends you got. Yeah. I remember I bought my son a car and he would ride there. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And I would tell him, I said, son, you need to stop picking up these four people all out of your way to pick up four. But when his car went down, nobody came by to pick him up. See, I'm telling you, life is a funny thing. So, so we get your corner as long as they get what they can get out of you. So we're going to skin with you, and then we'll talk about you on the social network. So the Bible said that Samson told that line apart because he had the strength of the law, and no weapon fought against him to prosper. The Bible said not only that, but after Samson, the Bible said after he did that, the Bible said he slew 1,000 Philistines. Are y'all going to pray with me after Samson? The, the Bible said after Samson killed that lion, he came up with a, a riddle. And the Bible said that his old wife, hello somebody, that little Philistine girl that his mama and his daddy told them to stay away from. Hello, are y'all going to pray with me? That, that, that Bible, the Bible said that she conspired with the enemy and, and she was able to solve the riddle. And he said, now, if it weren't for that heifer. Yeah. Uh, I'm just telling you what the Bible, I ain't calling no woman no heifer. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. He said if you had been fooling around with that heifer of lies. Let me tell you something, man. That's the wrong thing to call a woman. If you want to sleep at night. Let me tell you something about women and that storm. Women, women can stay up all night. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You got you got to sleep with someone, and then when that woman is mad, she can walk full all night long. And the Bible said if you had not in the cause of that, the Bible said he he took he took some he took some foxes because Samson got mad. He took some foxes, about three hundred foxes, and and, and and tied their tails together. The little fire a torch in the middle and destroyed all of the Philistines crops and the Bible said the Philistine tired of Samson. Are you my prayer? And then not only that, but the Bible said they would, they began to, to, to try to plot against Samson. They began to do things because they had gotten tired of Samson in all of his shenanigans. But because Samson began to do things that were unorthodox. The Bible said the first thing that he did when he went down to that caucus, hello somebody, took that pound of that lion's belly that had been killed, took that honey out and gave it to his mama and his daddy. He violated the Nazarite's vow because the Bible said that Samson had the responsibility to stay away from that what was dead. Can I tell you that I'm so glad that even when I do wrong, the Lord got me covered. Hello somebody. Did anybody you know that even though I sing it and come short? Did they here, and there anybody who had some personal mishap? Is there anybody here that come up short? I'm so grateful for the grace of God that, that even when I mess up, there's a God that's with me. The Bible says He's with me and He's just ready to forgive me. And if I go down on my knee, and I don't know how y'all feel about it, but there's been some time lately that I've had to go down. Oh, but I don't try to figure out why I'm with them. Don't try to, don't try to get on my Don't ask nobody why I've been on my knee. I just had to get out on my knee. And I found out if you go down on your knee, the Lord will actually your prayer because he's really and he's just to forgive us of our sin. And the Bible said the sounds will begin to go down because he violated the principles and the policy of God. And so we find him, oh, y'all don't pray with me, after he kills the thousand from the Philistine, we find him now in Gaza. And before he got to Gaza, uh, y'all don't pray with me, the men of Judah came and warned Samson. They said, Samson, your enemies, hello somebody, and I'll tell you that your enemies ain't happy with you. Your enemies ain't Satisfied about your property. Your enemy ain't happy about the progress that you're making. Can I tell you that some folk ain't happy you got a new house? Some folk ain't happy you bought a brand new car. Some folk ain't happy that you're still working in the middle of a pandemic. Some folk ain't happy that you're your husband is doing all right. Some folk are not happy that you're your wife ain't fighting. Some folk are not happy that your children are not going straight. And so the men of Judah came to him and said, Listen, we want to warn you that the Philistines are after you. We want to fact we come down. Here, uh, we come down here to bind you. But can I tell you that you can't bind the child of God? Can I, can I tell you that when God got his hands on it, yeah. can I tell somebody that when God is in your corner, can I tell somebody when God has sanctified your life, when God has called you to a special calling, nobody can do no harm unless God allows them to do it. I'm going to tell you that even when the devil is sick, yeah, he would take and he had to get permission from God to afflict. The devil can't do us no harm unless God give permission. The devil can't touch our lives unless God give the permission. The devil can't even touch the hell out of hand unless God give it all. So the Bible said that he went down to God. Are y'all praying with me? This boy had been raised to love God. Yeah, yeah. This boy, Samson, had been raised to go to church. I'm contemporizing. Uh -huh. He had been raised to know that God is a jealous God. Yeah, yeah. He had been raised to carry himself and conduct himself as a child of God. But Samson got to fooling around with worldly things. And can I tell you, if you play with the world long enough, if you do what the world is doing, it will cost you very dearly. The Bible said that Samson went down to God. Yeah. And because of his sexual appetite. Oh y'all some of y'all some of y'all got quiet when I said sexual. To us. 
I'm going to talk some real talk. Everything is shining. They've got a silver lining. Ain't good for us. Are y'all praying with me? Samson has been taught values and morality. All right. But the Bible said he went down to gossip. Notice what the word says. He went down, down to gossip. <laughs> and the Bible said where he saw a prostitute. Oh, don't y'all get uncomfortable. Come on, somebody here. No, no, no. You know, and the Bible said she wasn't just any prostitute. All right. No, no. She wasn't a run of the mill kind of prostitute. Mm -mm, no, no. She wasn't a raggedy prostitute. Oh, y'all gonna help me here? She wasn't a shabby prostitute. She probably carried designer bag. Tell it, Pastor. Tell it. I'm gonna pray with me. She probably carried Gucci. Yes, sir. She probably carried. Uh, what is that one with the, my wife? I don't know the name, but it cost me a lot. Uh, the one with the hell. What is it called? Oh, the <laughs> she, she wasn't, she wasn't, uh huh, she wasn't the kind of woman that she, the average woman that, that was on the street corner. This girl was fantastic. All right. Oh, yeah, come on, y'all. Come on, get me. Now, be quick, you're going to come on, get me. This girl, she had it going on. Okay. She had her black silk. All right. Oh, y'all gonna hear me here? You talk about a perfect body. Yeah. I'm talking about in all of the dimensions. She was 36. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, she was 36, 24, 36. Oh, yes, sir. She was what the common dog called a great ass. Yes, yes, Wish I had somebody. But she walked. <laughs> me and look at her. Yeah, when she talked, yes, sir. her talk was smooth as well. So the Bible said that when Simpson went down to Gaza, oh, yeah, I can with it. And why he had before, this girl had something that she didn't have. You talking about good looking, and oh, y'all don't help me here. I remember the first time I met my wife. She was young, and I was young, and I saw her strutting across the yard. Boy, she looked so good to me. I just began to celebrate. I said, God Almighty, I gotta have her. I'm not praying with me. Oh, yeah, because it was something about the way she walked. Yeah. It was something, and then when I got up close, it was all about the mannerisms. Yeah. And the Bible said he went down to Gaza. Yeah, he would bring this thing home and saw a prostitute. And the Bible said he went to bed with her. Oh, y'all gonna pray with me. You see, church boys, hello, somebody. One thing I had to learn in the military, come on, y'all, talk to me. Oh, okay. Because when I went to the military, I seen a lot of guys go down. I was in Germany. They would go down to the red light district. Yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody, come on, somebody. Me being as country as I was, when they talk about the red light, I thought they would come out where downtown where red lights were. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They took me down. Come on, I'm gonna just tell the truth and say that they said, Come on, sir, come on down here. We're gonna take you down to the red light district. All right. And I'm thinking, well, we're going down to where the stop signs are. Hello, somebody. And when they got me down to the red light district, there were women in the in the building and, and they were all different kinds. They were Russian women. They were come on, somebody talk to me. I'm trying to make a quarter how this boy got caught up. <laughs> they were they said, Look over there, look over there, you can have that. You can have this, you can have that. I said, oh, no, I don't want that, I don't want that. Because this one can be in trouble. I, I came to Germany by myself. I got a girl waiting on me. I can't afford to get caught up over here because I got a girl waiting on that. Hello, somebody. But let me tell you something. Let me just kind of shame the devil. Can I tell you something? Oh, I'll tell you what, I saw some things. Yes, sir. I don't even know how to go down twice. <laughs> So the Bible said we find him. I'm over it. Can we find him? 
Y'all, y'all pray with me, you? We find him in Gaza. And uh, when the Gazaites heard that Samson was there, they had already made a deal with Delilah. And they said, Delilah, we need you to help us to call this young man by the name of Samson and destroy everything we stood for. This man named Samson has been our daily enemy. We need somebody to figure out the source of his strength. And the uh, Bible says, yeah, that they said, well, we'll give you, we're willing to pay you handsomely. Not only will you get your fee from him, hello, somebody, because you do know that prostitutes don't come for free. Oh, y'all, I'm going to say, but y'all, y'all, I can't even hear nothing this before. Sitting there all crying and all, like, you don't know what I'm talking about. Hello, somebody, but they don't come free. They, they, they come with a charge, so much an hour. Hello, somebody. Then I'm going to go get that fee, but we're going we to have something to pay you. And so she began, the Bible said, that in the middle of the night, because Samson figured out something was up. See, because when you're close to the Lord, the Lord will give you a discerning spirit. Hello, so, so Samson gets up in the middle of the night because they've already locked the gates of Gaza. They said, we're going to lock him in. Samson got up because he was so strong. The Bible said he took the gate off the heels. Hello, so put the gate on his back. Are y'all going to pray with me? Home, to the house, and began to lay up with her again. And she began to make, play games with his mind. Can I tell you that the devil will play games with your mind? That's why I focus on cracking. Amen. Look, that's why I focus on coke and all this stuff. Honey, it ain't them. It ain't them. It's the stuff that's in them. Sometimes they can't help themselves. You know? They're giving up that, that, giving up that, that marijuana and coke and all that. That stuff will talk to you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. That stuff will make you take honey from your mouth. That, that stuff will make you hit your daddy in the head. So he began to lie on her and she began to work on him. She began to charm him. So she began to caress him. She began to rub his own ear. <laughs> right. She said, Samson. She said, if you, he said, Samson. She said, now, I need to know what's the source of your strength. Uh -huh. Samson said, well, I'll tell you what. If you take the tender lions, the tender lions of an animal that is number five, and wrap me up, I'll be weak as any man. All right. Are y'all gonna pray with me? Let me tell you something. It's dangerous to play with God. Yeah. I wish I had somebody that knew that it's dangerous to play with God. Yeah. Because if you play with fire, you'll soon get burned. Yeah. And so Samuel said, Samson said. If you tie me up, come on, somebody, with these lions, ten the lions of an animal, I'll be weak as any man. All right. And she tied him up. She told us from distance to tie him up, send us the things, send us the kind of lions of an animal. And she tied up Samson. And she said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Yeah, yeah. Samson got up. Oh, Y'all will pray with me here. Yeah. Samson got up and he threw off those things that were binding him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, by this time, Delilah said unto him again, she said, well, Samson, you fooled me the first time, but I need to know, come on, somebody here, what is the source of your strength? All right. Samson said, well, if you take four fresh groceries uh, and dry them out, I'll be just like any other weak man. Yeah, yeah. But can I tell you, a lot of our strength does not come from our own might. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of our strength comes from the might of God. Uh -huh. And the Bible said, she said, now Samson, the Philistines are upon you. Uh -huh. Samson got up and broke those bowels like they were nothing. Are y'all praying with me here? Can the witness? And he said, Well, she said, Well, you fool me. You've been mocking me, Samuel. Samson. She said, Well, take uh, ropes that have never been used before, and I will become as weak as any man. 
As she ties him up, as she said the Philistines all upon him. And Samson got up and shook those ropes off. But then she spent again to work on him. She said, Now, Samson, if you really love me, man. I got to pray with me. She said, Samson, if you really if you really love me, Samson, if you really care about me, she said, Samson, if your love and devotion is really true, she said, you won't be mocking me. And then she began to cry. And let me tell you something about when a woman cried. She'll get a man's attention. I remember my daughter had figured it all out whenever she really wanted something. She would turn on the shower, call tears. And uh, there was something about whenever she cried, I jumped to it. And she had figured out all I gotta do. I don't have to share with a few tears. And daddy will get anything I wanted to get. And I'm ready. The Bible says, yeah, that she began uh, to caress him. And she began to tell him uh, what men want to hear. <laughs> she began to stroke that boy, ego. <laughs> she began to tell him all of the good things uh, that he'd been able to accomplish. <laughs> she said, Samson, uh, can I paraphrase here? Yeah. Can I use my spirit? Spiritual imagination. She said, Samson, the word is on town that you're the strongest, that you are the best, you are the most attractive, and all the girls want you. Samson, if you heal, kill me, the source of your strength. Hey, God, all right. I hear Samson said I am a Nazarite. Can a good witness that's never been a razor a barber clippers on my head. Thank God, all right. Samson has said now cut the locks of my hair. If you cut them off, all seven of the locks that's on my head. I will be as weak as any other man. Thank God, all right. And the Bible says she locked him in her cradle. Thank God, all right. And Samson laid his head. Uh, on her lap, uh, hey God, all right, uh, she said, I got it now, uh, you see, he is be, he's gone from being high living uh, to low living now, uh, hey God, all right, uh, and while Samson uh, was in the lap of the night, uh, the Bible says she called a man in, uh, and they flipped his hat, uh, and a girl with his hat, uh, they woke Samson up, and said, Samson, the Philistines are all born in you. And Samson got up, kind of you with his hair. Samson got up, y'all, thinking he had the same power that he did when he put the bed. You see, when you trip down the low living car, the power he used to have is gone. When you see down the low living car, the power he used to have is gone. Down the low living car, the way it used to say with the friendliness, the low of affection. When you get down the low living car, your preaching ain't the same car, your witness ain't the same car. Oh, I'm sure. When you dip down the low living car, folk that used to respect you, folk that respect you no more. When you dip down the low living car, they used to call you Mister. Now they don't call you at all. When you dip down the low living car, they rob you of your jaw. That's what happened to David the other day. David lost his jaw. He said, Lord, if you feel her, give me my jaw back. Hey God, all right, huh? I got to go home now, huh? But the Bible says, Samson, I look, huh? The Bible says, the line of, huh? 
Oh, the Philistine, yeah. They said, Philistine, come and get him now, huh? They thought, all right, huh? Because he's not the man, huh? That he used to be, huh? Once he killed, huh? What father from Philistine, huh? With a jawbone of an ass, huh? They thought, all right, huh? He watched, huh? Killed a lion, huh? With his bad hands, huh? But he ain't the man he used to be, huh? They thought, all right, huh? So they took Samson, they found Samson, they thought, all right, see the old living, get you locked up, they thought, all right, the old living will separate you from the love of God, they thought, all right, I see Samson now, he's been locked up. Brother Kim, uh, the Bible said they locked him up. Uh, they count his eyes out. Uh, they thought, all right, uh, but I'm so glad. Uh, even when I'm living low, uh, if I confess my thoughts, uh, I'm going to God. I just found out. Forgive me, sir. Church is going to be effective. And our witness is going to be true. 
The only way our witness is going to be true, bro. We got to start living better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It starts with me. I'm from the ancient and I'm It starts with me. Y'all want to say it, man? Everybody in the building say it. It starts with me. Because I can't run out of perpetrate. And I'm something that I'm not. Because remember what I found out, y'all? These people know me that I don't know. And I'll be watching these people sometimes they sit back and watch they don't they don't introduce themselves or nothing. They just sit there and watch you. See, see, people want to see us something. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. See, I cannot tell you that this bad and I'm doing everything I want to do. Man. And I don't know about it, I don't know about it. Great. I can't tell these men to love their wife. And I got three girlfriends. I can't tell my son I'm drinking a cup of CB. I'm urinal drunk. I don't use that word. I'm urinal drunk. That word might not be appropriate. I can't tell him to smoke every time I got I got I got to preach and teach what I live. Yeah. I tell that all the time. I, it starts with me. And in this church, it starts with the pastor. Then it goes to the deacon. Then it goes to I've got to live what I'm preaching about. I'm running up and down this aisle, sweating my clothes out. I'm so hot right now, I'm about to burn up. But that don't do no good if I ain't living a lot. And some people might be talking about that. But you can't preach what you don't live. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna do this and that because I don't know what I'm gonna do. But, I'm, but I just pray to the Lord if I mess up. I don't want y'all to talk about it you know, on Facebook. I pray for it. Don't call me friends. Oh, girl, y'all look past pictures on Facebook. See, some of y'all go, y'all got jail bait on your phone. <laughs> yeah, you know you do. You got all these weapons. So when the preacher goes to jail, I'll tell us about it. Y'all, y'all call them and say, you know what? Oh, Brown got put in jail. How do you know? I saw him on jail bait. <laughs> There's a cost for us. Call is calling us to the buttons. It says, Come out from among them. The church has got to distinguish herself. In a world of darkness, we've got to come to the light. If there's one that don't know Jesus, Oh, the blood is running warm. While the members are standing, while the choir is singing, I have my hands and nostrils. And then you should come like that. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Opportunity to welcome you Amen. to the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. Amen. And all of the benefits that come with being a member of this church. Amen. I'll be talking with you very soon. I'm going to meet some more people. I'll be getting all of the staff together and we will sit down and introduce ourselves so you know who we are. Okay, then we will be assigning you to a tribe and a leader and all of that. So that when you have situations and you cannot get the path, then you'll be able to get them. I want to thank you for coming. Welcome to the church and have somebody come get you before we, before we get there. I want the members of the church, I want you to turn to the audience. I want the church to stand up at this point so that we can be consistent with what we've been doing. I want you to raise your hand and talk to your sister. Sister Thompson here, and Sister Thompson. <laughs> we take this opportunity <laughs> on behalf of God, on the pastor, this entire church, <laughs> to welcome you <laughs> to the New Jerusalem Baptist Church. You made the right choice, <laughs> you made a great decision. We promise <laughs> to nurture you. Thomas, to care for you. Welcome to our show. <laughs> <laughs> we to you. All right, it's time to go home. Come on. Be careful. Especially when you see y'all, be careful. Have a great day. Have I told y'all later? I love you. Love you, Pastor. Not late. Did I tell y'all later last week? Love y'all. Yeah. I want to prepare a speech in y'all. I truly love y'all. And I appreciate the cooperation. And I thank all of you that are praying for me because I feel your prayer. Let me say this before I close. These deacons, stand up, deacons. All the deacons. Let me get these guys to call. Stand up, deacons. Every Sunday morning, these men pray for me. They lay hands on me. And they pray for me. And I don't believe that they can take one week to another without these brothers praying for me. So thank you, brothers, for embracing me, praying for me, lifting me up, not only at the church, but keep lifting me up. So I can be the kind of leader that the Lord has. Now, if I don't see y'all, listen, if something should happen to me before I see you again, I want y'all to know that when I'm lying in my grave, I want y'all to know I love you, Jesus. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Shut up. Now we come now. I'm so gracious. I'm so grateful, God, for being in this place. I really am, God. I thank you for bringing me together with this church. Thank you for the love that I've experienced since I've been here. 
Thank you for those who are praying for me and I don't even know that you're praying for me. Thank you, God, for this wonderful place to worship, this wonderful people to pass. Now, Lord, I pray that you put it in my heart and my spirit to be the kind of leader you would have me to be. And I will love all people, and I will love the entire congregation, and I will not be guilty of loving one and not loving another. And I will not be guilty of showing favoritism toward anybody else. Loving everybody on the same level. Now, as we go from this place, we don't know what's waiting for us, but whatever's waiting for us, that will be tougher than the one that the Lord is carrying us. Dismiss us from this acting house and never die eternal presence. Walk, ride, Whatever the moment of transportation go with us, we'll stand by until we shall meet again. Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest from the divine and us his form now and forevermore. Let the entire church say amen. Let the entire church say amen again. Let the entire church say amen again. Turn, turn to your name. And say, neighbor, I may not have told you this lady. Sounds like the world. I'll tell you that. I love you, Dad.